Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Penny Wright, and with me today is Reverend Michael Smith. Uh, it is June 16th, 2020, and Reverend Mike, I want to thank you for being part of our oral history collecting during this pandemic. Um, I'd like to just begin by asking you a couple of questions about yourself. You were a longtime pastor here before you retired. So just tell us a little bit about your past work and what you are doing now. Okay, well, I, I was born and raised uh, here in Southampton, um, born in Southampton Hospital, mm -hmm. um, graduated from Southampton High School, uh, attended SUNY Potsdam for a year and a half, and then received my uh, BA from SUNY Old Westbury. Uh, back in well, we won't we won't disclose the date because okay. that's for both of us. Uh, and and following that, I, I spent a little bit of time uh, working. Um, spent a couple of years up at Dartmouth College, and from Dartmouth, uh, I attended Princeton Theological Seminary. Okay. Uh, upon graduating from from Dartmouth, I became the Associate Synod Executive for Indian Ministries with the Synod of the Southwest, located in Phoenix, Arizona. And then in 1985, I came back home and served as pastor here uh, on the reservation, church on the reservation. For 33 years. The, yes, ma'am. The Presbyterian, uh, Shinnecock Presbyterian Church. Well, yes, it's, and it's the oldest reformed Indian congregation in the United States, uh, organized in, in 1741, wow. which is about 100 years after um, the organization of First Presbyterian Church in Southampton. So it's yeah. safe to assume that there were some in interactions yeah. back in the, in the mid-1600s between the reservation and the colonists in Southampton. This would be an entirely whole interesting conversation to have at another time, and we will. Uh, sure. I know that the uh, you told me that the reservation is composed of about 750 and 850 residents at this time. So can you tell us a little bit about how this pandemic has affected the reservation? Well, it, it's, it's a very small community, as, as I said, uh, and um, really hasn't altered life a, a, a great deal. Um, we're, we're small, everyone is, knows everyone, so the interactions go on. We do practice a certain amount of, of social distancing, um, and, and by and large, it's almost been life as usual. Um, you know, we haven't looked for, a, a, most of us live a very simple life here. Mm -hmm. um, we have received some outside support in terms of, of some of the commo necessary commodities um, that, that the uh, Council of Trustees, which is our tribal government, has secured for the nation. So we're, we're, we're in pretty good shape. I'm glad to hear that. Do you think that the, the reservation residents as a whole have kind of self-quarantined more than they usually would? Would they usually go out to the reservation, leave more often than they are now? Uh, maybe a, a little bit more. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't been a significant difference. I mean, folks still run into town to uh, pick up some of the necessities. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're probably a little more careful and cautious, and, right. and we practice wearing the mask when we go into town. And, okay. What uh, about those, the reservation? Do you wear a mask at all on the reservation? Um, if we're in a closed environment, yes, but most of the time is spent outside, especially with the weather being as it is. Right. I mean, I spend a lot of time outside just working around the house, doing some gardening and uh, things of that nature. And, are there, by the way, are there church services being held at this time? Well, the, the, the folks have asked uh, if we could do church, and so we have a, a small gathering usually on the first Sunday of the month, uh, which is our communion day. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a small group of folks who come in. And, and again, we practice social distancing there and, and we're very careful and cautious. 
um, because a majority of, of the folks in the congregation are, are some of our elders. So we're very conscious of that and, and we, we make sure that social distancing is maintained. Have you had any cases on the reservation? We've had a, a, a couple of cases. Uh, we've had some where, where people who are members of the reservation who didn't live here, who, who lived away, um, had a couple of deaths uh, regarding, you know, as, as a result of COVID. Um, we've had a number of individuals, uh, younger individuals who, who have since um, you know, returned to health. So it hasn't been a, a significant issue in, in the community. I mean, some folks work, you know, within, they, they, so, uh, many of them are caregivers. So I, mean, I, I think it wasn't totally unexpected that somebody within the community would be affected. But um, they've recovered and, and it hasn't spread as far as we can tell. Right. Well, I'm awfully glad to hear that. Do you feel that you have any more or less time on your hands now in the last few months than you used to have? No, <laughs> I still you know, have errands that, that, that I do, um, babysit the grands. Mm -hmm. um, my wife works in, in town, so I drive her to work in the mornings. Mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. and things are, are pretty, uh, pretty much normal. That's good. Are there things that you feel that seem more important to you now? Yeah, I, you know, I've come to uh, appreciate more the, the, the interrelationship that, that many of us share and, and can we, we stay in touch um, through text and cell phone can't get much more technical technological than that for me because you saw the, the issue we had trying to trying to set this up um but yeah we come to appreciate um more the 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 importance of relationships um and just maintaining those relationships and, and reaching out and having folks reach out um it's been very rewarding i have heard that from quite a few people and it does seem as though that ha is a silver lining if there has been one that has been the silver lining and some people mentioned trying to have a simpler life but it sounds to me as if your new normal isn't as dissimilar from your old normal yeah we're, we're i mean we're a fairly simple community um you know, value the, the, the simple things in life. I mean, it, it, so it hasn't been a tremendous upheaval for, for many of us here. Right. I mean, I usually ask people what they miss the most about their old life, but I'm not sure what you would say to that question. Um, not, not much. Just the, I mean, perhaps just the, the, the ability to reach out because you know when we bump into folks that that we know um you know the first tendency is to kind of reach out and hug and or shake hands and um you know that's a no-no nowadays and so we we've kind of you know stayed in line with that and and um uh, so yeah i mean you, you miss that a bit um, right. well um it sounds as though um I, I also ask people what they find of comfort that, that's giving them comfort during this time and it seems to me you've partially answered that question as well yeah because we we do you know we stay we, we're a multi-generational community mm -hmm. and you know we stay in touch i mean i i i well i was calling my mom until we found out that uh she can't receive my calls because she's on Verizon, I'm on AT&T, and it just, it's not, something is, is wrong with the line. So, right. uh, and she only lives, you know, just a little ways away, just on the other side of the res. So, I mean, I drop by and, and, and see her, and she's, she's cautious about going out and having visitors. So, right. but we, we've maintained that, that intergenerational uh, kind of relationship that, that many of us have. Right. Are there, Mike, there's a community center there, is that correct? Yes. 
is is that a place that people are visiting these days no i mean that's that's pretty much shut down like, okay. like many other places okay. they, there, there are very few community gathering spots right. uh, well, the, the church is probably the, the, the biggest one at this point. And that, that again, is it's a small worshiping community to begin with. Um, but we, we uh, again, we maintain, well, put it this way, um, the elders and, and those in, in my generation, although I guess I'm an elder too, uh, we practice it more than, than the younger generation. The kids are, you know, they still have that, that, uh, that notion of of being invulnerable and and so they they don't practice social distancing the way that we do it's true well reverend mike it sounds to me as if your wisdom and i mean your collective wisdom really on the reservation has given you all a, you know you have created a life that has many of the things that all of us value and don't do enough or, or or spend time thinking about enough. So are there any parting thoughts you would have or advice you would give to others who are going through this, this time? No, I mean, I, like, when I send the text and we text back and forth, I mean, one of the things that I always end with is, is be safe, stay healthy, Mm -hmm. and shalom which is peace and and uh you know that's that's yeah. important just that 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 whole notion of peace uh yeah. inner and outer and if we ever needed uh peace now we ever needed peace before we need it now when we look yeah. at uh, that some of the the impacts of of this virus on on the community the country and creation uh, we we just need to practice that shalom Right. Reverend Mike, those are wonderful parting words. I thank you so much for your time. Oh, so you stay thank you. safe and stay <laughs> healthy and shalom. Thank hey. you. Thank you, Penny. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.